Hey guys, so today we're going to do Piaget's theory of cognitive development. We're going to cover everything that you need to answer any question about Piaget for your OCR GCSE psychology paper. You can see the spec on the screen now, and if you have any questions, please feel free to ask and I'm happy to help. Otherwise, let's get learning about Piaget. Piaget created a theory of cognitive development. Cognitive development simply means the development of the mind and mental processes, so things like thinking. And he says that every single child in the world goes through the same four stages of cognitive development. So every single person goes through them. That means that they are invariant and fixed, which means that they are the same no matter what your background is. So every child goes through the same four stages of development as they grow up, no matter their background. Now, just like with theories like social learning theory, the most important thing about Piaget is the key to and there are tons to learn. Here are some on the screen now and we're going to break each of them down as we go through the four stages and we're going to get started with schemas. Now schemas are an important key term but not one you need to know too much about. Schemas are simply mental pockets of organized information. Think of it as like a filing cabinet of all the information you have in your head about stuff. So if I was to say to you the word dog you may think small furry four legs. These are schemas of the word dog. Again you don't need to know loads about schemas but you do need to know that they change throughout your life through a process of either assimilation or a Accommodation. So as you grow up, you experience changes to your schemas through these two key terms that you do need to know very briefly. So assimilation is when your schema stays the same, but you add something to it. Whereas accommodation is where you actually change your mind about something. Maybe your ideas have been challenged and your schema changes. For example, if your school builds a brand new block with some new classrooms, your schema of your school will stay the same, but you're going to add a brand new part of that schema, which involves that new classroom. This is assimilation. However, if you actually change your psychology classroom from one side of the school to the other, that's going to change your current schema of your school. That's accommodation. I like to remember this by looking at the name. So assimilation has got two S's at the start for same. So assimilation, your schema stay the same, but we add something new to it. Whereas accommodation is when your schemas actually change. And so we have the two C's at the start for change. So accommodation, change. And honestly, please don't spend too long looking at these two key terms. They can be confusing, but you actually really don't need to know too much detail. The most important bit is about these four stages that we're about to go through. And it all starts off with the sensory motor stage. Now, the sensory motor stage is the first stage of development the children go through. It goes from birth to two years old. And in this stage, children learn about their environment physically. Now, the main key term linked to this stage that you have to know about is object permanence. This simply means that when you hide an object from a child, they are unable to understand that the object is still there. By the time they finish in this stage by two years old, this should no longer be a problem. So, for example, if you were to take a six-month-old baby and hide their teddy bear from them, they'll cry because they think it's genuinely gone. By two years old, they know it's just under the covers. Now, you have to remember this as object permanence. Now, once we move to the two to seven year old range, we move into the pre-operational stage. In this stage, we have a few more developments. For example, we develop what we call animism, which is making the mistake of believing that inanimate objects, things like toys or furniture, have actually got feelings. For example, you may hear a child call a rug naughty because they've just tripped over it. Now, children in this stage are also really egocentric. This key term simply means that children can't put themselves in other people's shoes. They believe they are the center of the universe and that everything revolves around them. The concrete operational stage is third, and this happens from seven years old to 11 years old. There are some new skills developed here. For example, they start to become a little bit less egocentric. They also develop what we call decentration, which means that children are able to deal with two bits of information at the same time. For example, they can tell you that a car is big and red. Children can also develop what we call reversibility in this stage. Now, before this stage, if you asked a child to reverse something, they'd struggle. However, now they understand that objects or numbers can be changed and then taken back to their original form. And finally, we have maybe the most important key term, and that's conservation. This links heavily to the key study in this topic, which is Piaget's study himself. You can see a link in the corner once I upload that video. However, for now, all you need to know is that the word conservation simply means that children understand that the properties of certain objects, such as size or length or weight, they don't change even if the object's appearance changes. So let me give you the real example that Piaget did himself. If I was to show you these two rows of coins, you should be able to tell me that they both have the same amount of coins. However, if I did this, then a child at the start of this concrete operational stage may incorrectly tell me that this row has more coins. You hopefully can tell me that actually they both have the same. This means children at the start of this concrete operational stage may really struggle to conserve, and as they come to the end of the stage, they manage it. And finally, we come on to the formal operational stage, which happens from 11 years old onwards. In this stage, children start to use what we call abstract thinking. That means that you can think about more sophisticated and scientific concepts. For example, if I was to give you this little thought challenge, if Bill is taller than Jim and shorter than John, then who is the tallest? If you want to pause it, 
and hopefully you'll get the answer of John. And this is because you're able to think about these things in your head without doing any trial and error. This is part of the abstract thinking you get in the formal operational stage. In this stage as well, we've overcome egocentrism, we can conserve, and we've dealt with many of the problems in the previous stages. Now, when you do your revision on these four stages, it can be really difficult to keep up with all the key terms. So the most important thing you have to remember is to keep referring back to the spec and keep focusing on the key terms that are actually named on the spec. Now, just like all the other theories, Piaget's theory is absolutely not perfect. The main criticism is that it's too reductionist. This is one of the debates that we need to know, and I'm going to do a video on this. So I'm going to add a link to this in the corner once that's done. For now, the reason that Piaget is reductionist is because it doesn't take into account all sorts of things. Things like your upbringing, your emotional state, your standard of education, genetics, and therefore it's too reductionist. It doesn't take everything into account. So for the exam zone today, I want to show you a couple of things. Firstly, we've got two real past paper questions here. You can pause it if you want to give it a go. Otherwise, the answers are on the screen now. As you can see, it's all based around those key terms and which key terms fit into which stage. And so in order to help your revision with this, I've linked down below a free resource for you. I've created this blank table. All you've got to do is fill in the gaps and that should help you to organize all the information. Test yourself by doing it multiple times, then come back to some practice questions and you'll be an absolute expert in no time. Otherwise, if you want to test yourself, I've put a QR code for a blocker on the screen now. Give that a scan, play some solo games and try and get a high score. I'm going to have tons of videos on this channel for anything OCR GCSE psychology. So I'll see you guys in the next video that you decide to check out.